All right, hello everyone. It is Friday, June 23rd. The time is 11.37 New York local time. Um, we are coming up on, just make sure that I have my times right. Okay, yes, yeah, so the London Stock Exchange just closed. And I uh, wanted to do a review of my trades today. So as you can see, uh, I'm on the NASDAQ. I'm on regular trading hours. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch that. Well, yeah, I'll, sw I'll switch that to electronic right now. So uh, during the London session last night, I uh, thought that the NASDAQ was going to draw lower. So I took a short at... Uh, 15,161 during my London time frame. So the reason that I got short here was I was expecting a draw lower on the NASDAQ and I was waiting for an inefficiency that price should trade back into during the um, London session. So of course that is my that is my model. And let me go down to uh, yeah so four minute chart here was our inefficiency right there. So there was our London silver bullet and I wanted to get short on that. Now it has been my experience that the NASDAQ will typically wick through, if there's a uh, fair value gap, it will typically wick through um, let me get there. Yeah, so I uh, it will typically wick through and it, and it did end up going to the higher order block but um, so four minute chart I thought that the draw on the NASDAQ was going to be lower. So I went short one contract at uh, 161 spot 50. I put my stop up above what I thought there was going to be the London high. And I went to sleep and uh, just slept through most of this. Um, yeah, slept through most of this. And um, then uh, coming into the morning session, I thought that we were going to uh, draw all the way down to 964 evens and we still might but I decided to go ahead and pull the pull the order um, when I was well in profit so I ended up covering right here so that that's where I covered right there uh, I was looking for it to come this is on my top step account I covered at the blue line I thought it would come all the way down to 964 evens. Uh, it has not done that yet. Looking at our regular trading hours on the NASDAQ, you can see that we drew back into um, this. So this is our regular trading hours gap from Wednesday. And uh, obviously we repriced, uh, we repriced basically to uh, this regular trading hours gap. So. It's important, especially when you're trading um, stock indices, to be aware of your regular trading hours gaps. Um, ICT says to use the last three days, so we drew down into that. And at this point, I'm not I'm not very convicted on the Nasdaq either way. Um, I'm still preferring the sell side, but uh, I'm obviously flat. Okay, back onto ele electronic trading hours, um, crude oil. So. I was seeing uh, lower on crude oil. Um, you can go watch my ICT tape reading practice number four. And so I got short on crude oil um, basically right at the start of London. Got short at 69 evens and I was looking for us to come all the way down to, uh, I thought we would come all the way down to 66.98 which is our lower low. Well, obviously we didn't do that. We came down just below this low that was made on Thursday, June 23rd. Now we go to our regular trading hours here on crude oil. We can again see the same um, same draw on liquidity that was right there. So regular trading hours gap. Um, that is what uh, that is what we see there. So. Just going to show you the difference again. Um, if you're not using regular trading hours, uh, you're going to have a, a hard time seeing these. Um, so click on the electronic trading hours. You can see that I went short during London and then basically covered uh, the first time that we came into the regular trading hours gap. Not that I saw it uh, at that time, but 
what ended up happening. So regular trading hours, um, 30 minutes chart. Uh, let's see. So you could see the big uh, regular trading hours gap, this part of it that had not been traded or repriced into yet. Go into our electronic hours, and you can see that we basically traded into it and then uh, found support there. So that is the regular trading hours gap um, in action. I also traded um, from Asia last night. I traded the 30-year bond. So I traded the 30-year bond, um, and I was expecting us to take out this Thursday, uh, 22nd June, New York AM high. We did do that. I covered my short pretty early. Going back to our regular trading hours on the 30-year bond, it's pretty clear now if you're using your regular trading hours um, what the draw on liquidity was, and that was obviously up here. We also had an inefficiency on our regular trading hours that was very visible right here. So again, very important that when you are trading U.S. stock indices or you're trading the U.S. 30-year bond, uh, crude oil, you need to uh, flip on your regular trading hours to get a better idea of what, of what price is doing. Um, so we traded up into this inefficiency on the regular trading hours that uh, came up ended up trading into exactly the 50% of that. I'm going to say that's exactly, yeah, one tick off. So one tick off the 50% of this regular trading hours fair value gap that we had not repriced into yet. So that is um, that is crude oil. Uh, sorry, that is the 30-year uh, bond. Um, and that is all that I traded on my um, Top Step account. Yeah, so let's get to... Um, now let's get to my Apex account, my reset. Um, okay, so I uh, took the same trade on the NASDAQ, except um, as you can see, I got a worse uh, exit. Russell 2000, um, using our regular trading hours, we can see that we had a big regular trading hours gap. Go on to the five minute chart and um, it basically traded just above the 50% here. And when I saw that, I went short. And uh, as we are coming up on New York lunch, I don't want to really hold this over into New York lunch. Um, so I just covered it. So that was um, it's my Russell 2000 short. Uh, crude oil, I took the same exact trade on my Apex account, except I took it with two contracts instead of one. The Dow, um, the Dow, I shorted this morning at um, 3,000, what was that, 020, and I covered it at 004, so 16 Dow points. Um, the reason why I took a short on the Dow, so we go on to our regular trading hours, and we draw our FIB. We can see that price, um, let's use our 15-minute chart might be a little bit more visible to you. So using your regular trading hours, we're obviously in the New York session. Um, we resettled, um, resettled a lot lower, had a big regular trading hours gap. And when I saw that price was respecting the 25% uh, retracement of this regular trading hours gap, I decided to get short thinking that we would draw immediately lower which we might still end up doing, but I don't want to be in the trade during New York lunch. I'm going to wait for my um, PM silver bullet time frame if I do trade again. So that was the YM. Um, the 30-year bond, I ended up, uh, ended up taking a long on my Apex account and making four ticks. Now let me tell you why. Now I lost the first time I tried it. We're going on our 15-minute chart on the YM. And we can see this part of the this uh, regular trading hours uh, volume imbalance right here. And all of Michael's inefficiencies um, can invert. So they can act as dynamic support and resistance, basically. So they can trade above, trade back into it, and then find that as support. So looking from our regular trading hours here uh, we actually wicked down below on the 30-year bond which is why I got stopped out on my first attempt 
Um, I'll keep it on the 15 minute chart. Uh, first attempt at this scalp, we wicked below the regular trading hours gap into this lower volume imbalance and then we found a little bit of support. So I got in after I saw that this was a wick. Um, you can see that I got in at 127 spot 24 and I covered it four ticks higher at 127 spot 28. Um, did take a loss on natural gas. So um, natural gas, I was thinking that it was wanting to turn lower looking at our regular trading hours. Um, I thought that we might want to come in, uh, take out this low from Wednesday at uh, 2 spot 488. That was incorrect. We actually have now fully refilled the um, we've re fully refilled the regular trading hours gap. So right here you can see a regular trading hours gap on natural gas and we resettled and basically just uh, have worked worked up to go fill that regular trading hours gap. So natural gas was actually a long on the open this morning. You could see that I got short thinking that it would turn lower and I took a um, I took a loss. I took a 12 cent loss on natural gas. Um, what else did I trade? Um, I tried trading on my Apex account uh, British Pound Futures and here looking at our regular trading hours um, I ended up scratching the trade because uh, I didn't see so obviously whenever you're dealing with Forex the primary session is London so um, ex unless it's like the Australian dollar or the Japanese yen and those can have a lot of movement during Asia so when you're looking at the metals, when you're looking at so gold, silver, and copper, London is a huge session for that. So you can see these massive, um, if you're trying to just trade New York regular trading hours on silver, for example, you can see that there are, you know, gaping holes in the chart, right? And that's because when it comes to your metals and it comes to your Forex, the primary session is London not New York. Your indexes, your indices are different, right? The secondary session is London and the primary session is New York. Now, I will still look at the regular trading hours for the metals because um, it still will show you where price has been inefficient. So, but just so you know, if you are trading the metals or you're trading Forex, um, your primary session is London. It's not New York, but that's not to say you can't still turn on your regular trading hours to see New York gaps. So I did not trade silver. Um, I tried trading the British pound and uh, took a loss. And I believe that is all I traded. Thirty-year bond, uh, Dow futures, pound futures, and natural gas. Yeah, that is all I traded. Um, I am sitting at a six thousand dollar trailing loss now on my Apex reset. So if I trade, um, meaning that this account was actually up at 306. Um, if, uh, if I trade my Apex account during the PM session, um, I will probably only take one trade because, I, uh, again, your Apex account, the trailing loss follows you. So you can be way up in the account and then take a trailing loss and it will, you will still lose. So you've got to you've got to nice and smoothly get to 20k. You can't you can't take it too fast. Um, so I've got 6k of drawdown now out of my 7.5k full drawdown. So I call that a $1,500 loss basically. Um, okay, uh, last thing that I will talk about is my TradeStation Cash account. Um, I took a very similar um, trade on the Micro Russell. So. Uh, I actually got in this trade at a worse fill. I thought that we were going to originally turn down at the 25%. We ended up going all the way up to the... Actually, no, I'll, I'll tell you what the truth is. Um, I was using my electronic trading hours, and so I got short on this order block right here and this inefficiency. It actually traded all the way up. You could see it on the electronic trading hours, but it's difficult to see. It was right here. Um, but if you turn on your regular trading hours and you use your regular trading hours gap, it actually uh, just turned right at that 50%, basically. Uh, so very important that if you are trading the New York um, stock indices to uh, reference your um, 
regular trading hours, especially when you're actually in regular trading hours. Um, these regular trading hour gaps and inefficiencies are the the algorithm is just looking at the um, New York. So I do think that the micro Russell, the Russell 2000, is still going to uh, trade lower. I think it's going to come all the way down, but I did not want to hold into New York lunch. I just want to wait for my PM silver bullet and see if we can scrape out another um, another win. So I'm up 6350 uh, on my cash account. Um, I'm up 4.4k on my Apex evaluation account, and uh, I took the max profit. Uh, well, let me check my. Um, Uh, yeah, so, um, I took my max profit on top step. So my max profit for today was 156,950. I got very close to that. So, um, that is a review. New York AM session trading, Friday, June 23rd, 2023.